Hey Dave, are you there? How you doing? Apologize for being rude on Sunday. Oh well, just see what you're up to. Bye bye. See you later on tonight. Bye bye. Oh man, Dave, this is Sharky. Uh, I'm calling from a pay phone. Wasn't able to get hold of you yesterday. I wound up working all day uh, at the lube. Things kind of went down a little quicker than anticipated. I'll give you a call a little later from another phone if I can. If not, maybe we can just, you know, you can come over to my place Monday after I'm done lubing or something. We can check it out, see what's up, see what's there. Uh, if I don't get with you today, I'll see you Monday. I'll talk to you later, bud. Four two seven one two thousand for charge by phone. September sixteenth, Poplar Creek in Hoffman Estates, Illinois. Showtime is eight p.m. on sale now at all Ticketmaster outlets. Call three one two five five nine one two one two for charge by phone. Please be aware that there are counterfeit tickets going around, so be careful and buy tickets only from us or other authorized ticket agencies. And remember that for the Greek concert, Grateful Dead ticket sales is the only authorized place that is selling tickets. Do not buy tickets off the street. They most likely will be counterfeit and you won't get in. To reach the mail order hotline, call 415-457-8457. To reach the West Coast hotline, call 415-457-6388. For mail order ticket problems, call 415-457-8034. Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. California time. For merchandise mail order and vending information, call 415-456-2883. This message will repeat immediately. Thank you and stay in touch. The official Grateful Dead East Coast hotline. This is a new message as of July 31st. For specific Grateful Dead and Jerry Garcia, Bob Weir dates, but for no mail order information, call the West Coast Hotline at 415-457-6388. Grateful Dead Fall Tour information is on this message. The following is important reschedule information concerning the Greek Theater Concert. August 17th, 18th, and 19th, please note the new dates, the Greek Theater in Berkeley, California. These are benefits for the Rex Foundation. All tickets are general admission. The mail order is over. Orders are being filed on a random selection basis from orders postmarked July 13th only. We are sorry to announce that due to an unforeseen scheduling conflict on the part of the University of California at Berkeley, they have forced us to reschedule. The Sunday, August 20th, 3 p.m. concert has been rescheduled for Thursday, August 17th at 7 p.m. The tickets for Sunday, August 20th will be honored on Thursday, August 17th. If you cannot make it to the concert on Thursday or due to this change you are not able to make it to any of these concerts, please do one of the following as soon as you receive your tickets in the mail. Send back your Sunday tickets or tickets for a refund or send back your entire order for a refund. Please, if you will need a refund, send your ticket or tickets back immediately so that they will be available for resale to someone who can make it. You will receive a full refund of the ticket price, including the mail order service charge. Again, we are very sorry for this inconvenience and have tried our best to get the university to allow the Sunday concert, but no avail. No refunds will be given at the door. We thank you for your understanding. The following are Grateful Dead fall tour dates and mail order information. The first mailing date for the fall tour is August 3rd. October 11th, 12th, 14th, 15th, and 16th. The medal 
their own order. Duplications of any kind will cause disqualification of all involved orders. All orders must be sent in a number 10 size envelope. On Are you with them? Uh, not really, no. Well, they're over, you know, they're over at the state capitol. I think they're through the attorney general's office. But if you look in the phone book, it's listed in the phone book. And I would call, I would call them and have them send you the forms, and you may be re able to recover all your money. I mean, the money that you paid them. But how would that be possible? Is I mean, I, I don't well, understand. Possible. Well, you'd have to tell the Bureau of Consumer Protection the same story you just told me, and then they would deal with, with him. They would deal with the merchant. You've tried to rectify this yourself already with the merchant, and he's not. Yes, I've, I've gone back down. I had to take an entire day, well, literally off, to go back down there and sit around for 10 hours while they did nothing. Yeah, that's what I would do if I were you. Now, as far as this transaction on your visa, you know, I can try and charge it back for you. Um, there's a couple, I, I have one reason code here that's um, reason uh, code 56, defective merchandise. Now, I have to read o up on that. I've never used that before to see if that might cover something like this. Well, it sure is defective, and I can have any any transmission shop write you a, a, you know, well, a certification that, that it anything is. Anything that you have for documentation would be helpful, and that's that's why we need a letter from you. And, and unfortunately, I mean, you do have to pretty much state you know, trying to make it as briefly as you can in your letter, what did happen with you, you know. Uh-huh. Uh, as for, and the reason being is because not so much that I need to know the story, I have to use that as documentation to charge this back. But, but you, I understand that, but along with what I've told you, at least it gives you more of an idea. Oh, yeah, right. Than, than right. just a now, simple like letter, you know, then you would have to call me back and say, well, what the heck are you talking about? Yeah, I have... You know, I, I really couldn't put any... Anything like that into a one-page no, letter. No, I know you couldn't. <laughs> and uh, that's, that was what I was assuming would be necessary, something short and brief. Yeah, right, it is. You um, know, you just state in there that this merchant billed you to rebuild your transmission and put a new pump in, and um, that, you know, after you returned home, you had problems and you had to have it checked Well, I had problems from the time I left there, but I couldn't go back. They told me to go away. Right. That okay, it was 10.30 at night. They kept going on, well, what other transmission shop would stay there until 10.30 at night to get you on your way? Right. Well, yeah. And I say, well, that's just, you know, sure, anyone would do it if they can if they can make a buck on it. Yeah. You know, yeah. or 150 bucks on it. I'd stay at my job if I could make 150 bucks. Right. Well, you know, in one say, night. You know, that's between you and them, but I would certainly try and recover all my money if I were you through the Bureau of Consumer Protection, you know. Well, what, would the Bureau of Consumer Protection decide that my case was valid, just from what I would say? Well, they'd look in, they'd look into the merchant. They'd ask him, in other words. Well, they, uh, you and know, might I'm not go sure in, exactly what they I mean, did. would it go in so far as me having to take him to small claims court myself? No, I, no, Or would I don't that just be... That I don't know. I mean, I'm just, I'm <laughs> just referring you to the Bureau of Consumer Protection. That's up to you if you want to do it or not. Well, I'd like to. I mean, you if know. that's a possibility, I sure as heck would. If you call would. them, they'll send you forms to fill out concerning this whole thing, and then, you know, you tell them all about it. Yeah. But I mean, I, I certainly would. I know that they're very good uh, as far as... Help, you know, trying to help protect the consumer from being ripped off, you know, so yeah. you know, it might be worth the while. But anyway, uh, in the meantime, now, you know, you, uh, you know, as I said, you have to put it in writing to us. Uh, and uh, and I'll send you a copy of the two bills that I got from them. Uh, you know, you can see the dates and, you know, what was on them mm -hmm. and everything. Anything at all you can send us for documentation. If you, if you can get something from this transmission shop up here that you went with, there in the you know in the, in the uh -huh. meantime, stating that the work that you you know were billed for definitely was not had not been done. Yeah. You know, then you've got them cold there. Uh, you know, yeah. I, feel. I don't know if they'd be willing to do something like that because then they're kind of sticking their neck out too. Well, I, I I would think that in a situation like that, they I know the person up there wouldn't want to take the time to sit down and write everything out in a letter himself. Um, is it? plausible to write something out or type something out myself and have him sign it well you know something that you I can phrase like on their letterhead or something like that yeah 
I kind of figured something like you that. You need something valid from them. Yeah, well, it would be valid from them. I'm not, you know, suggesting doing anything illegal. No, but I mean, just their signature just, uh, wouldn't. You, you need something like on their, you know, on, on one of their, I don't know what all they have, their billing or their what have you. Mm -hmm. Well, the only form that I know that they have is a, I don't know if they have a letterhead, but they're just their billing. You know. I'm sure they do. If they're business, they yeah. probably have a letterhead or, or their billing notice or what have you, you know. Yeah. You know, like I say, that you would have to see if they'd be willing to do that, too. But, you know, you would simply have to state in here. Now, I can look up this one transaction code and see if it says anything in there. I, I never used that one before for detective merchandise, but that's... Yeah. Um, I would certainly think that would probably be what I would use, you know, to uh -huh. charge this back. Yeah. Um, well, that's that's sure as heck what I would call it, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and I... I mean, my cousin's a mechanic, even, and he's told me they didn't replace no water pump, Dave. This is the same car you had when you went down there the first time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it has the exact same problems. I still have to manually shift it, you know, because the pump heats up, and and when the fluid heats up, when it's cold, it's fine. It'll shift by itself. But as it heats up, it, it shifts. The shift ratio gets higher, and you have to start manually shifting it to get it in the drive. Mm -hmm. It's a three-speed automatic. Well, why you know, so uh, I've been, I know, I know that the pump has not been replaced because initially when I went down there, they told me they couldn't even find one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you know, why don't you, uh, you know, just put it in writing to us concerning this transaction, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, now what you're going to need is this. You're going to need the uh, reference number off your bill. Oh, I'll just send the entire copy of the bill. Well, but I need it in your letter. Oh, in the letter, too. That's what I'm too. saying. I need a written letter from you. Oh, uh, that, that describes the transaction in detail, including what line number it's on on the bill. I need to have yeah. a reference number, the transaction date, the name of the merchant, and the amount of money. Uh-huh. And your card number must be in the bill, of course, and, you know, it must be signed by you. Okay. Um... You know, Visa does protect the cardholders, however, they have to protect merchants, too, and, and we have to have valid reasons and valid documentation, or we can be fined for charging something back that's not, you know. So that's why we, we, we have to have the documentation they require. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I'll, I'll kind of gather everything together and put okay, it in some total. You know, I'll make photocopies. Anything at all you have yeah, that would... Uh, be proof of this, you know, will be helpful for you. Yeah. Well, like I said, I know there's nothing I can do about the cash advance because that didn't even involve them. In as well, much as, no, you know, there, I mean, there's I no took way out I the can money there. the cash advance. No, I know that. No, but no I, know, I realize have, that. You uh, do have the Bureau of Consumer I do, Protection that you can... I do have some kind of recourse there, though. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize I surely that. Would, I surely would. I mean, the, the only thing I could think of doing was going down there and placing a... Uh, battle in small claims court with them, which yeah. you know would be in their area. They know everybody. They probably cost you a lot of money, maybe in the it, long run. Anyway. It would cost me a lot of money, and they probably win anyhow, just because of, they know the judge or something. If you know, because it's uh, out of town. You know, if you contact the Bureau of Con Consumer Protection, I mean, <coughs> you know, if they feel you've been ripped off by this merchant, they'll they'll contact him, and you know, you may. And and you may the the, the transmission out. shop up here even told me that Chevrolet. That the transmission that is a 200 metric was issued in 7980 Chevette, and it was one of the worst transmissions that mm -hmm. GM ever issued. I'll tell you right now, if you ever go to buy a Chevette, don't buy a 79 or 80. Well, I don't buy any GM cars. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm an I have my own little fight with GM. I uh, have <laughs> I'm, an, I'm an avid Chevy fan. You know, I, I like Chevys. Uh -huh. That's all the cars I've ever had, aside from a Datsun. They've all been Chevys. Uh -huh. And... Uh, uh, I didn't know it when I bought it, and I didn't know it when they first worked on it, and I didn't know it until I came up here that Chevy had even put, you know, some kind of, uh, you know, advisory out that they were not the best working transmissions and that there were certain patches available for them and everything mm -hmm. uh, that these people down in Levittown didn't even appear to know about because they never mentioned it at all. Mm -hmm. And it was mentioned to me over and over again by Bob, the guy that owns the transmission shop up here. Bob Muse of B&M Transmissions, and, uh, you know, I I don't know what recourse I might even have along those lines, but I'm the second owner of the car, mm -hmm. uh, 
I don't know if GM has any recourse for that kind of thing or not. But I do have to contact some people. Unfortunately, I, I work at a job where I don't have access to a phone from 8 until 4.30. Mm -hmm. And, in, you know, a lot of businesses that are open during the day are closed by 4.30, especially government offices and banks. <laughs> so I was surprised to catch, uh, catch you. And oh, yeah, and on Thursdays and Fridays we're here till 6, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that, that does help out some of the people that just can't make it there during normal right. business hours. Right. Okay, well, you, you get a letter into us, and I'll see what I can do for you on this 11660 charge. Okay, um, I, I appreciate it. And, uh, uh, be sure and include a number where I... Oh, you say you don't have access to a phone? Can, can there... Well, I have an answering machine at home. That's how oh, I got okay. my call earlier today. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, so usually that works. If it mm -hmm. doesn't pick up within five or six rings, just keep calling back. Mm -hmm. it, it, it has trouble picking up occasionally. Okay. But I do have an answering machine, and that's way I get my calls. Okay. And I can usually return them after 4.30, quarter or 5. Okay. That's about when I get home from work. Alrighty. That'll be fine. Alright. Well, I thank you very much okay. for your Good help, Mrs. Crone. And uh, I'll get that letter, you know, written and sent to you as soon as I can. It's going to take a little bit of time, uh, especially since I have to go to one of those shops that's not open in the evening. Why? <laughs> I'm going to have to try and cut out of work early someday this week and go up to B&M. Uh, that's one of the reasons I haven't had it fixed by them even as yet, because I don't have the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you need the car and you don't have another, you know. But, uh, okay, well, we'll... But, uh, yeah, it'll we'll be a few days yet. And, and as soon as I get that India, I know I have, uh, like, 30 days or something from the bill uh, to write a, a statement like that. Right. But I just wanted to call... Uh, see, I was calling to return a, another question about a bill from Orlando. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, it, it was just an opportune moment, that's all. Sure. You know, Fine, I, but the sooner you start, you act on it, the better. Always. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, like I said, it'll be a few days yet, oh, but I'll fine. get that letter in the mail to that's you. That's fine. And I'll address it to your attention so okay. that you do get it. No. Okay. And I appreciate all your help. All righty. Have a good afternoon. You now. too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
you want. Okay. 